Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and welcome to the first ever questionnaire quiz on how to profile and type other people. With today's video, you will be learning how to type other people with confidence and you will be learning about the number one mistake everyone makes when typing other people. But before we get started, let me just take a moment to introduce you all to my new mic, Blue. Uh, it's called Blue Snowball Eyes, uh, but I like to call it R2D2. And uh, me and Blue today, we are going to be diving right into the world of personality profiling. Now, the goal of this quiz is to become more confident in understanding your friends and your family members. So it's not just about knowing what type they are, but also how that person expresses said type and what that type means to them. We're often in a rush to know what another person is. But true understanding requires us to also understand why that person is that way. Because we often, when looking at other people, see only the unhealthy aspects or the healthy aspects. Sometimes we idealize a person and sometimes we tend to demonize other people around us just because we don't understand them. So I believe that learning to type other people and to understand other people more accurately and without this bias is important to form more healthy relationships. And uh, I want to introduce a new method that you can use to type and study your friends and family members. And I want to warn you about other st speed typing methods. Because a lot of speed typing methods only teach you to kind of confirm your own bias. They create these self-confirming bias uh, methods. And often what these do is they just cement misunderstandings. They say, oh, that person is that type because they don't understand you, or that person is that type because they're bad, or because they're annoying, or because they're an idiot. So they take off often in the stereotypes and the things that we struggle with in other people uh, without providing reasons, true reasons, for why we misunderstand these people, or why we struggle with these people, and what we can do about it. So what I'm providing in this video is challenges, eight people that you will be typing, a quiz, and a methodology to type these people. So I provide a list of check marks and I want you all to check through and to go through these marks to get better at understanding the people around you. Now the core reason I enjoy checklists like this is because when I go without them, sometimes I miss something. A checklist can help remind me of things to look for when I don't know what to look for. They give me some kind of way to uh, put down my thoughts and to organize my thoughts so it's not just all chaos. Um, so hopefully that will help you all. Uh, just go through and check them out and check the ones that you can answer and go back and forth if you can't answer a question just to keep things moving because sometimes some things will be easier to spot than others. Uh, often people that are highly introverted will appear to be more difficult to type on judging and perceiving. And the person that is strongly judging or strongly perceiving uh, might seem ambiverted. So that's also worth noticing. Um, I also encourage you to look at subtypes already. Uh, it's a bit of an extra credit thing and we will take more... Uh, care to these in follow-up courses in the future, but here's just some basic things to look for. Steadiness versus determination, openness or conscientiousness. And if you nail down clearly that a person appears to be intuitive but can't decide if they are thinking or feeling, then that is a point for openness. If you can nail down that the some, a person clearly is a thinker, on the other hand, but you don't know if they are intuitive or sensing, then that's a point for conscientiousness. So that's also something cool to look at. The more easy it is for you to look at a certain letter, the more easy it is for you to nail down their subtype. So let's get down to the assignment. Um, I want you to go through this list of celebrities. I've tried to include celebrities that have been in recent TV shows, in recent 
uh, upcoming TV shows or people that have been in the media lately. For example, Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn, the UK uh, Prime Minister candidates in the recent election. I also added John McCain, uh, who has been in some buzz in the American media lately, and uh, Ian White, uh, a bit of an unusual Game of Thrones actor, uh, playing the ultimate bad guy, really. Mads Mikkelsen, um, who often plays these really uh, psychopathic kind of villain roles. And um, Taylor Schilling from Orange is the New Black and Dylan Minette from one of my favorite TV shows of this year, 13 Reasons Why. Oh, and not to forget Viola Davis of How to Get Away with Murder. I recently started watching that TV show and it's amazing. Now, I want to give some hints uh, to look at when typing these people. And uh, hopefully these eight hints will help you with each individual video. Uh, if they don't, at least they will give you some food for thought. Now, when you have answered these questions, I want you to go into ericdor.com and I want you to go into the forum and um, one week from now, on the 21st, I'll be releasing the follow-up quiz and I will be uh, releasing the answers to these questions. So note, these answers might not be 100% perfect, maybe I got something wrong. But what I want us all to look at is not that we all want to have exactly the same definition, and exactly the same answer to these questions, but what I want you to pay at the closest attention to really is how confident you feel in understanding other people, because you want to gain information about other people, and you want to gain information that you can feel confident about. You want to learn something about other people. You want to gain understanding of other people. So that is the core goal. It's not to agree with everyone, but it is to gain some semblance of understanding of the people around you. Now, going to the forum and uh, getting started, and uh, there you will find a thread, uh, the personality profiling quiz, and uh, in that you can post your answers to the questions and this is the most important do give your questions about different people that you're unsure of do uh, tell me what you had your biggest difficulties with and what you felt were the most easy to see and we can talk more about that in the coming video so that's all for today i hope you all enjoyed this video i hope that um, you enjoyed the new audio quality and that uh, uh, yeah, I'll meet you all tomorrow. Now, when typing another person, what you want to do is not just look at if a person appears to be introverted or extroverted, because this can vary depending on development and situation, but you will want to see when observe what makes that person more confident, more calm, more stable, and what gives them energy and what takes away their energy. So you'll be listening to when that person lights up and you'll be noticing when that person shows anxiety or stress. Starting with these checklists, I want you to check in when a box appears to be true and when another box appears to be false. And I want you to, when you do this, give a kind of confidence rating for yourself. Rating from 1 to 10 how sure you are of what you are seeing, because that can also teach you when you need more information. Often, when I can't type another person, I need more information to set an answer, and then I don't want to fake being sure about something when I'm really not. Beginning with introversion and extroversion, what you will see is that the introvert speaks more calmly about themselves and about their inner world and their knowledge where the extrovert speaks more confidently about the world around them and about new information. This is what gives the extrovert certainty, things around them, compared to what gives the introvert certainty, things inside of them. The introvert appears to become more calm when they can think about or reflect on their experience, 
when they can draw on knowledge from the past or when they can draw on values or things that they know to be true or that they believe is right through their own logic or through their own philosophical reasoning. The introvert seems to, to some extent, doubt outside information and needs to double-check its validity. So when they see something, they want to make sure that it's real. <laughs> they kind of want to back it up, back up what they see with knowledge or theory. The extrovert, on the other hand, will appear calmer when they can get clear answers and information from their surroundings. The extrovert will seem to doubt theoretical or outdated information and they will need to double check and reaffirm that it's still there, that it's still true, that it still applies. The intuitive will take more fun and energy from abstract ideas and hypotheticals, where the sensing person appears to enjoy concrete and practical action and steps in the moment towards something they value. The intuitive speaks with energy and enthusiasm about various abstract possibilities and abstract interests, and they appear to be drained by the thought of taking practical action to accomplish a task. The sensor seems the most energetic when they can talk about and speak about real things and experiences, and the sensor you study seems to feel bored by the thought of speculation or creative exercises with no end goal. So here, it's important to acknowledge that the sensor can go into an intuitive reasoning, but only from a secondary interest. They have, an, they have a sensor's interest in being intuitive, where an intuitive will only engage in sensing because it might provide some intuitive value. That's the core reason. With feeling and thinking, the feeler will appear more motivated, more warm, when there are stories to express, and identities to express, and nuances to reflect on, and values, and ethics, and various social issues to deal with. It can have to do with spotting archetypes, art, painting, seeing different nuanced ways of, to express yourself, or ways to do something. And it can have to do with daydreaming. They seem most motivated when sharing daydreams and personal experiences that they've had with other people, or when sharing experiences that they see around them. And the feeling type appears more concerned and careful with emotional and social actions. They pay more regard to making sure that they are expressing themselves authentically, that they are doing and treating and acting in a way conscientiously. They they put in hard work and effort into feeling, where the thinking type puts in hard work and effort into facts and data. The thinking type seems the most motivated when they can share objective information about their surroundings. They seem the most involved and the most careful with facts and with information. They double check and make sure that it's right because it's important to them that it's right. It's important to them that it's objective. And when it's not, they become more sloppy and they make more mistakes. Just as the feeling type can become slightly sloppy in mechanical and work-related situations, more likely to make mistakes. When studying if a person is a judging or perceiving type, you'll notice that the judging type experiences relief when they have an overview or a general understanding or a strategy to deal with the situation in advance, where the perceiving type seems the most relieved by spotting new opportunities, ideas, or alternatives, by taking new actions to pursue said events, adapting, adjusting, ex uh, balancing, and making sure that they act logically, rationally, in accordance to what is the smartest move in each particular moment. The judging type becomes more relieved when they can organize and structure their environment or their thoughts in some way. The perceiving type appears the most relaxed when they can act freely and make changes in the moment. The judging type appears the most tense when they must respond to unexpected conflicts and when order is somehow disrupted. And the perceiving type appears more tense when they must adhere to careful order or discipline in some way.